How do we excavate imaginary objects of the future? Excavation is when we dig up objects from the past to learn more about history and who we are. But in this workshop, we're going to be using objects we find on the shores of the Thames to imagine alternative futures. First of all, take your time walking along the beach or the riverside, searching the ground for interesting objects. We are doing this workshop alongside the Thames as part of Totally Thames 2020. However, you can easily apply this workshop to objects you find in a forest or the fields. Anyone can be a future archaeologist by finding objects in your back garden or around the area where you live. Just make sure you use objects that don't belong to someone else and won't be damaged by clay and plaster. This is a fairly messy process. For this creative reimagining, you will need a block of clay to make a mould, some casting plaster, a flexible bowl and a spoon to mix the plaster, a flat knife, such as a palette knife, for smoothing and lifting the clay, and a board to work on. First of all, spend some time rearranging the objects you have found. Let go of what you associate with these objects. Allow your imagination to play with what alternative forms your objects could create. Perhaps you have discovered the skeleton of a creature that hasn't evolved yet. These shells could be wings. This piece of metal could be the bone of a robot. Once ready, prepare a flat base with the clay, large enough to suit the objects you have chosen. It's helpful to make a small wall of clay around the mould so that the plaster doesn't spill. Next, press your objects into the clay. Make sure they make a fairly deep impression, at least a centimetre, so that your final object is strong enough that it won't break. As you can see here to the left, repeating objects is another way of creating new forms. Then mix up some plaster. The quantity you make depends on your object. However, the most important thing is to make the right consistency. So fill your bowl just under halfway up with water and then slowly sprinkle plaster into the water until a small mound appears. No matter how much water you use, you want the plaster to sit as a little mountain raised above the surface of the water without sinking. Plaster can be a skin irritant and so I advise you to wear plastic gloves. When the mountain has appeared, take your spoon and carefully mix the plaster and water together. You are aiming to have no air bubbles. I find the mixing in a figure of eight with the back of the spoon is effective. Once you think there are no lumps, pour the plaster slowly into your mould. Pouring it slowly will help reduce the bubbles. As you can see to the right, you can also pour the plaster fully up to the walls of the mould to create a plaque style object. Tap your mould a little to allow bubbles to rise up from the surface of your object. The plaster will take between 10 and 20 minutes to set. When it looks dry, place your hand on it. If it's warm, wait a little longer because this means the chemical reaction is still taking place. It will be stronger if you wait until it's cool. Once it's set, it's time to excavate your object. Take care to be delicate with your excavation, as plaster can be quite fragile where it's thin. Carefully lifting the clay away from the plaster is the most successful method. If there's clay stuck to your plaster, you can gently brush it off with water. When I look at my object, I imagine it's the heart of an AI machine from the future. What do you see? And what will you discover when you make yours? <laughs>